Thanks for tuning in and welcome to another episode of Rio's how-to video series. I'm Zach Dalton and today I'm going to show you how to rig a fly rod. If you've just purchased a new setup and you're unclear on how to put this together, I'm going to show you a few simple tips to make sure you do it successfully. First, we want to identify what rod size that we've purchased, match the fly line and match the reel. You'll notice that your rod's going to have the size identification just above the cork handle. Secondly, we want to make sure that we match the fly line size to match the rod size. And thirdly, we want to make sure that the reel is balanced and also the right size for the fly rod. Now that we've determined that we've got a balanced setup, we need to decide which direction we retrieve. 99.9% .9 of all reels come out of the box left hand retrieve. If we need to change it, you might see that in another episode. But this is what a left hand retrieve reel looks like. If the line's coming off the bottom with the line guard, and will retrieve with your left hand. It'll be just the opposite with the right hand retrieve reel. With the line coming off the bottom of the line guard and the handle on the right hand side, this means that it's a right hand retrieve reel. Next, I wanna talk about the importance of backing. This reel has about 75 or 100 yards of backing on it. And backing serves two purposes. One, and it fills the reel up a little bit so you don't have tiny coils of fly line. And two, if you have a long running fish, that's longer than the length of your fly line, you've got an insurance mechanism built into your reel. Now that we understand our backing, we're finally ready to load our fly line onto our reel. The majority of reel lines have welded loops at both the front and back end for easy rigging. We need to identify the loop at the back end so we connect the fly line properly. We've got a little sticker that says attach this end to backing. That's the, that's the end that we want to connect via a knot or a loop to loop connection. I prefer a loop-to-loop -loop connection and that's what I'm going to use here. I'm going to set up a little rigging station here. I've got two empty fly boxes. I'm going to run a Bic pin. A Bic pin was designed to fit perfectly through a fly line spool hole. And I'll balance it up there nicely. The line has twisties on either end to make sure that the fly line coil doesn't fall apart. I'll carefully untie these fold them over the edges. And now I'm ready to tie a surgeon's loop in the backing so I can go loop to loop connection. I want to do a surgeon's loop about the size of my fist or about the size of the reel. Simply double over your loop, do a couple overhand knots together, two or three is perfect, and tighten it together. Got a nice big loop that'll fit over my reel and I'll show you in a second. I'm gonna take the scissors, trim my tag end. Find my loop with the attach this line to backing sticker. Pull the sticker off. Then take my backing, thread it through the hole of the loop pass my reel through the backing loop and draw it tight together to create a square knot connection. There's definitely a right and a wrong way to load a fly line onto the reel. You want it to be direct to direct. That means that the fly line coming off of the fly line spool goes on the reel the exact same direction. So I'm gonna hold this close to my chest and start to retrieve it on. I want to go back and forth so I don't stack line on one side of the reel or the other. I want it to load very nice and even on the reel. And I can start to feel the diameter of the fly line increase as I get to the belly or the weighted part of the fly line. Almost there. One last thing I want to do is make sure that I get the little line ID sticker that's on the spool and affix that to the reel. Now that I've got the sticker affixed to my reel, I've only got a couple more steps before we're ready to put the rod together. Next up, I want to attach a leader to the fly line. I've got a PowerFlex Plus trout leader here in a nine foot 5X size. This is going to be perfect for, you know, some smaller dry fly fishing. This is going to be a loop-to-loop -loop connection as well. And you want to be careful on coiling your leader. 
we got about four main coils that wrap around the body of the leader. So I'll undo those nice and car carefully. Then I'm gonna put the, the leader over my fingers and pull it off nice and slow. Just like that. And the leader's gonna have a little bit of memory. I'll give it a, just a simple tug down on the small tippet section. Give it a little bit greater tug on the taper section here. And on the butt section, I want that to be nice and straight, so I'll give it a good, strong pull to stretch out all the memory. Next, I'll find the loop to my fly line, and I'll pass the loop of my fly line inside the loop of my leader. I'll strip this back till I get to the tippet section of my leader, then pass that right through the hole in my fly line loop. And I'll pull that through nice and smooth, slide the loop over, snug it down nice and tight, and then I've just connected my loop to loop connection from my fly line to my leader. Now we're ready to head down to the river. Now we've made it down to the water. I'm gonna show you guys how to assemble the fly rod and get us out in the water and try and catch a fish. A lot of fly rods come in two pieces. A lot of come in four piece uh, construction. Uh, this one's a four piece model here. Um, this one's got a hook keeper that I like to use to help with aligning uh, uh, my guides. So I'll start first by putting the butt section in and I'm gonna kind of offset uh, the first stripping guide with the hook keeper about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna wait till I push down a little bit till I get some friction and kind of twist and seat at the same time. That's gonna make sure that I get a nice solid connection there. I'm gonna move up to the second piece and do the same thing. Come down about a quarter of an inch offset, push it down and twist at the same time. Make sure it's nice and tight there. And lastly, the tip section. Same thing, about a quarter inch offset, push it down. Nice firm connection. Give it a shake, make sure everything's good. Grab my reel that I've got sitting down here. I'm gonna slide this onto the reel seat. Take the slide band, push that up, and then I'm gonna take the lock nut, twist that all the way up. You might be able to see I've got my tippet section uh, sticking out of the frame of my reel here. And that's so I can quickly find the tip of my fly line without having to have much of a hassle. I'll pull off a length of line until I get to the tip of my fly line here. And there's definitely a right way and a wrong way to thread your rod. You never want to start with your leader. It doesn't have enough mass or diameter to go up in there. If I try and do it with this thin diameter line and I get up to the second guide or so and I drop it, it could fall all the way down and I'd be starting from scratch. A little frustration that you don't want. So I'll take about two or three feet, double a long length over, and start with that. Because if this long length of fly line big diameter falls, it's gonna expand into a big loop that prevents it from going all the way to the bottom of the ground. I'm gonna work this up, making sure that I get every single guide. If you miss a guide, it's gonna create slack in the fly line, and it's not gonna shoot very well. You wanna make sure that you get every single guide. Get that through the tip top, you can grab that loop, kinda of pull that down. Yeah, you're off and running. So that's how you properly assemble a fly rod. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you on the water soon.